So 6.1, solving systems by graphing. And we're going to also analyze special systems. So all systems mean is two equations, right? Two of something is a system. We're graphing two equations. In math, you can graph four, five, six equations. Totally doesn't matter. All right, so 6.1, solving systems by graphing. Here are your first two equations. You'll see it says up here y equals x plus 2. So I just rewrote it so we have 1 over 1. So you have the rise over run of your slope. And then I put the 3 over 1 as well because, again, we want both numerator and denominator so that we can count out our slope. So take a minute, write those two equations down, please. Then we have some steps for graphing, two whole steps. Yeah, four people in a class is going to be pretty light, but at least you get to see somebody else in your family, you know? You get to see how that I'm like six feet six as well, so... I'm actually five feet six, but you know... What? <laughs> yeah, you'd have no idea. My head would be like at the top of the board if I were 6'6". Six, six. I'm short and stout, built like a fire hydrant. Okay, so steps for graphing. There you go. We're going to graph the y-intercept, which is b, and y equals mx plus b. And then we're going to do the rise over run of the slope, which is m in that equation two times, so twice. So remember you guys, semester ends next Friday. You have Monday, you will not have homework. Just out of curiosity, are other teachers, other classes assigning you homework on Monday? Shake your head, yes or no? Funny, okay. Because I know some of the math teachers in the department are assigning homework on Monday, and I'm like, hell no, you don't have school. We're not assigning homework. I got enough stuff to do. But this weekend, make sure you get your missings in, right? I'll send missing assignment reports right after this class period. Um, so make sure you do that. So we're going to graph the y-intercept first, then we're going to do the rise over run of the slope twice, two times. I'm going to draw a coordinate plane up here. So we start at positive 2 on the y-axis. And from there, we're going to go up one, right one, right? Up is a positive direction. Right is a positive direction. You can also go down one, left one. So I did way more than three points, right? But we're looking for where these two are going to intersect. So I'm going to draw my line here. Oh, by the way, you do not have a quiz today. Yay. So second equation starts at negative 2 on the y-axis, right? The y-intercept is negative 2. So if I count up 3, right 1. It's a good idea to count out your slope until the two lines cross, if they're going to cross. And I'll tell you how you can look at these equations during the lesson and tell if they're going to cross or not. I knew that these two lines would cross because they have different slopes and different y-intercepts. So they have to cross eventually. 
and we'll talk about that in a little greater detail as well. But if you count out your slope until the two lines cross, then you know exactly what that order pair is. Because if you miss it by one, you're going to get out market wrong, right? So if you're one of those four or five people, five people who didn't have graph paper, go buy some. So this is one, two on X and one, two, three, four on Y. So those two lines cross at a single point, which is two, four. So I guarantee there are people out here because it happens even junior year, people who do not even know how to graph this order pair. So if you're in that boat, please tell me so I can help you come to access time because it's not a hard concept, but if you never knew how to do it, it is hard until you learn. Raise your hand if you need more time on this. For those of you that are not lame and have your camera on, as two people just turned them off. Again, just it doesn't work well for you if your camera's off all the time, just so you know. So we have two more equations here. I'm going to give you like three minutes to work on these equations. Okay, so go for it. You got three minutes. Lies, both of you, are in Clevis. I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow, so then I won't have bad hair days anymore. Unless, of course, I get a bad haircut. You never know. I want you to write the answer where these two lines cross in the chat. Parentheses, one number, comma, the other number. So critical, you get those missing assignments in if you have them before the 16th. You have until the 16th. If you're one of those kids that likes to save up your missings, turn them all in at the end. Just think how much I enjoy that and don't do that. Right? Because if you turn in like 20 assignments right at the end, just not cool. So if you have 10 missings, Finish one, submit. Finish one, submit. Christian, your hair looked fine. Come on now. I just watch your cameras off and am I, I just think things. Yep, put your answers in the chat, please. Don't just assume the first person got it right. You don't know if Cole has it correct or not. Oh, we got multiple different answers. Now we got some similarities. Looking for some more answers. Good, good. Still got 40 seconds. Take your time. And I totally get, like, some of you turn your camera off for a sec. You need to, like, blow your nose. I don't care. You know, whatever it is, turn it off for a sec. Just come back. That's all. So we have some commonality here. Negative 2, 0. That was the most frequent answer. So let's graph this thing and see if that works. So we're going to start a positive 4 on the y-axis. Go up one, two, three, four. And we're going to go up two, right one. Up two, right one. Also going to go down two, left one. Down two, left one. 
draw your line. Drawing it accurately is very important. Like I said, if you're one off on your answer, you get it wrong. So you got to graph it accurately. So we're going to start a positive 2 on the y-axis for the bottom equation. And I'm not going to go up one, right one, right? I, well, I'll do it just so you can see. But you can tell I'm angling away from the line. So I want to count the opposite direction. Go down one, left one, down one, left one. And I'm going to count until the two lines meet because then I should have the exactly correct answer. And I will show you how to check so you're positive you have the correct answer. Because math is actually enjoyable when you get the right answer. Weird concept, I know. So our answer here is negative 2 on x and 0 on y. So good job if you had negative 2, 0. Now if I want to double check this answer, my negative 2 here is my x value and my zero is my y value, and I can just plug it in right here to this equation, right? So if I plug in zero for y, and then I'm gonna plug in one times negative two plus two, negative two plus two is zero. So that's how you can check to make sure that you got the correct answer. What a great idea to do something like that on a quiz. I said you won't have a quiz today on this stuff, but maybe on Tuesday, maybe, you might have a quiz where you have to graph one of these and then do 6.2 as well. 6.2 is kind of a difficult section. We'll spend two days on that section. Solving systems, again, two equations, that's all systems mean. So solving systems with substitution is on Tuesday and Wednesday. Remember, Wednesday is asynchronous, Monday off. Wednesday's asynchronous. So I'll teach you 6.2 on Tuesday, and then you'll have like another assignment, same stuff on Wednesday. Now you got some baby alligators. So we're going to write a system of equations talking about these two little alligators. Who knows how you escape an alligator? You're being chased by an alligator. What do you do? Charlotte was like, run. The alligator would eat you in like, alligators can run like 30 miles an hour. So you, none of you can run 30 miles an hour. Usain Bolt can't run 30 miles an hour. Turn into Michael Phelps. Alligator would still get you. Nobody knows, seriously, how to get away from an alligator? You have to run, but you have to run a specific way. You got a zigzag, right? Yeah, exactly, that's what I said. Those tiny little legs, right? They cannot, they can't do lateral moves well. So if you run like zigzag, you can get away from an alligator. Important math facts you're learning today, after all, right? So scientists studied the weights of two alligators over a period of 12 months. Initial weight and growth rate of each alligator are shown below. After how many months did the alligators weigh the same? You could climb a tree. That's a good call as well. Um, alligator one. So you got to write this down. I'm sure it's really hard to see because they wrote this in white lettering. Again, I ordered a long HDMI cable, so I'm hoping I can share my screen and it'll be perfectly clear starting on Tuesday. We'll see if it actually works, who knows. But alligator one, so you could write, I'll write it down here too. Oh, look at that. You can't see that yet. Oop. Alligator one weighs four pounds, four pounds at the start. And alligator one, rate of growth, so that's an L. I'll make it cursive, it's better. And then it grows at a rate of 1.5 LBs per month. Alligator two.
starts at six pounds and then grows at one pound per month. Okay, I want somebody to be brave and tell me how to write this first equation. So you can raise your hand and I'll call on you. I'll mute your mic. Go for it, Charlotte. Um, it would be one minus one equals one point five x plus four. You want to do the other one? Sure. Um, it's y equals one. Oh wait, yeah. You're right. X plus six. Okay, so I got the two equations, no big deal. If you get confused with these story problems, how many people do not like story problems? Raise your hand. Oh, all you people with your camera off. Uh -huh. So per month, per pounds per month, that's where the variable goes. So if you see a word like each or per, that tells you you need a variable with that number. And the four pounds is like the starting weight, right? So the little baby alligator was four pounds. It'd be pretty cute, right? Like that big. Four pounds. So that's a starting point. That's a y-intercept. And then it grows a pound and a half per month. That's why it's 1.5x. And uh, starts at six pounds, grows one pound per month. Only thing I'm going to change with this equation, I'm just going to write one over one because I know I'm going to have to graph it. So it begs the question, 1.5 is a decimal. How can you change this into an improper fraction? Or what is 1.5 as an improper fraction? Go for it, Austin. Wouldn't it be like three, three halves? Yeah, good job. So I'm just going to scribble that out and put three halves in its place. So I'm just going to write y equals three halves x plus four. So Austin knew that off the top of his head, there was three halves. How many people, raise your hand if you knew that, that 1.5 was three over two? So how the hell do you figure it out if you had no idea that that was the case? What would you do? Anyone know? Anybody? So you'd have to kind of mess around with the calculator. If you've got one of these graphing calculators, and if I were you, I'd go buy one because you're going to have to have one junior year, and I can teach you all sorts of cool tricks on this that will make your math grade better. But here's one of the cool tricks. We'll just show you on the graphing calculator to try to motivate you to buy one. They cost like $100 to $140, by the way, so it's not cheap. But I can hit math, enter, enter. And it'll take a decimal and turn it into a fraction. Super handy. This thing also, here's a very common fraction, 17 over 51. Most of you have no idea that that's one third. But this will also reduce a fraction for you. Right? So you can know that it's, you can reduce any fraction. Makes it super easy. Right? Even if you have a decimal like 0.2, and you go math, enter, enter, one-fifth. So it'll switch any decimal, if there is a fraction for it, into a fraction. And it also goes the other way. You just divide simply the other way. Okay? So let's say we didn't have the fancy graphing calculator and I wanted to figure out what 1.5 is. You just have to kind of do the guess and check thing, right? So you go 4 divided by 2, too big, right? So then I might try 3 divided by 2 and be like, okay, that's it. And it might take you 10 times longer than that, but that's the only way you can figure it out. We're going to graph these two now. So I have a graph page up here. I'm just going to rewrite that top equation like the 3 halves instead of the 1.5. Okay, so I don't need that one anymore because I rewrote it right here. 
then we're going to graph. What we're trying to do is figure out at what month the alligators are going to weigh the same and how much will they weigh. So we're going to graph these. So we're going to start at positive 6 on the y-axis. And from positive 6, we're going to go up 1, right 1. I'm also going to go down 1, left 1. I'm going to keep making more points because I just want to make sure that I can tell where the thing crosses. Then we'll graph the second line. So we're going to start at positive 4 on the y-axis. And we're going to go up 3, right 2, up 3, right 2. So intentionally, I'm counting out until those two lines cross. So make sure you do the same. And then we have to identify what that order pair is. So down here, so one, two, three, four on X. So after four months, that's what the four means. They're going to weigh 10 pounds. So you got to write me some sort of sentence about this so I understand that you know what you're talking about. So you can just say something like, after four months, the alligators will weigh 10 pounds. Okay, so just give me some kind of statement that tells me the time in months and what they're going to weigh at that point. Anybody ever seen a bear in the wild? How close, Austin? I don't know, but I think 20 feet. I'm not 100% sure. It was a few years ago. So you're unsure if you saw a bear in the wild? No, I saw a bear, and I don't know how far away it was. I see. Anastasia, how about you? I don't know. We were driving down the road. Uh, it was looking at a horse, so. Gotcha. So we had, at the high school I went to, this program called Outdoor Leadership. Part of that program, you would go for a week in the woods and you do like compass stuff. You had to do a solo. So you're in the woods by yourself, 10 by 10 piece of plastic, half pound of peanuts and raisins, three waterproof matches. That's all you got. It rained the entire time I was there. I like it, Cole. Um, but I saw a bear that was like maybe six feet away from me. It was insane. I'm sitting around the campfire and I look over at our backpacks. We had like leaning up against a tree and a bear was like sniffing one of the backpacks. Super scary. Anybody seen a mountain lion? How close, Anna? I saw it actually at my grandparents. Uh, big, a house in Colorado Springs where it's like only strictly like trees and stuff like that and it's pretty secured and I was I it was pretty far away I mean I was in my room inside the house but outside the window I saw it so nice yeah. Cole saw a moose too I saw a mountain lion I lived in Netherlands for a brief stint I couldn't really handle it up there to be honest but uh I was driving down this dirt road going to see you basketball game rounded a turn and all of a sudden I saw these green glowing eyes like close like that you're like oh jesus um and then the thing just like launched off the road 
It was so powerful. It was just so freaky. Just so you know, mountain lions can grab a 200 pound deer and jump eight feet into a tree. So if you ever see a mountain lion, does anyone know what you do if you see a mountain lion in the wild? I do. What do you do? You make yourself big and you back away slowly. You don't turn your back. And you make as much noise as you possibly can. If you run, they're like, I don't know, they're born with it, but like if they see your, the back of your neck and they start going after you. Yeah. If you run, you're dead because they will chase you. It's like fun. They're like, oh, look, the little human is running away. I'm going to catch it and eat it. So don't run. I went on this mountain bike ride, and I read in the paper somebody the day before I went on that mountain bike ride. They're cruising along the single track trail. Anybody mountain biking here? Oh, y'all should. So I was I doing did. this trail over by Golden called White Ranch. So I'm all the way at the top. It's a brutal, like, two-mile ride up this savage part. But I was up top. So this guy was riding on the up top once you get up into the mountains and he's cruising along the single track. Mountain lion is stalking him like 30 feet up the hill. And he notices the mountain lion, like feels the hair on his neck stand up, freaking out, obviously. And he, he looks again and the mountain lion's gone. He's like, oh, thank God, mountain lion's gone. Comes around a turn, mountain lion is staring at him right in the middle of the trail, right? He can't get off the trail because it's single track steep on both sides. So he gets off his bike and starts screaming bloody murder. And the mountain lion's like getting closer and closer. So he's like, oh crap, what the hell do I do now? He grabs his mountain bike, holds it up over his head and starts shaking it. So the chain will rattle, makes all sorts of noise. And then finally the mountain bike, mountain lion left. But, and then I rode that thing the very next day and I was like, oh my God. Private moose walk through a private campsite I was in. Oh, yeah. When I lived in Netherland, I heard my dogs all of a sudden barking like crazy. And I looked outside my window and I looked, my dog was like low to the ground, right? Barking like crazy. And I looked and there were two furry legs. There was a bear going like this right in front of my dog, like, ah. And I ran outside and yelled at the bear, but then it ran off. So exciting story time for you there. Okay, next slide. We're almost done, by the way. Not too many slides on this thing. Different kind of solutions when you're graphing two lines. So we can have one solution. You don't have to make these cross exactly where they do. Just draw a coordinate plane, draw two lines, and make them cross. Doesn't really matter where. This is where, right, blue and red make purple. So these are two lines that are exactly the same line. They're graphed right on top of one another. When that happens, infinitely many solutions, okay? You have no solution when the lines are parallel because they never cross. That's why you have no solution, okay? And we'll talk more about that, but I want to get this down first. So one solution if the lines cross, if you end up with the same line, infinite solutions. And if you end up with parallel lines, no soul. So we also have more kind of vocab stuff down here. But I just want to tell you on these. So if the lines cross, you're going to have different slopes and different y-intercepts. So different... slope and different y-intercept. So when I graph that very first equation, the two lines we did at the beginning of class, I could tell they crossed because they had a different slope and a different y-intercept. So what is the case here? It's the same line, right? So same line is going to have same slope, same y-intercept. So same slope and y-intercept. So what's the same here? The slope or the y-intercept? 
Go for it, Austin. Slope. Same slope. Good. So parallel lines have the same slope and different y-intercepts. So it, that's just super helpful if you know that, right? You want to have a quiz today, but it doesn't mean you're not going to get quizzed over this information. So the last thing you have to know with these three different types of graphs, if you have one solution, it's independent. So one solution, independent. You're an independent person. You're by yourself, right? One solution, independent. If you end up with the same line, right, graphed right on top, then it's dependent. So write down independent for one solution, dependent for infinite. Then if you have an answer, it's consistent. So are you uh, lagged for me? What did you just say? So one solution is independent. Did you hear that? Nod your head if you did. Yeah, no, I did. Okay. And then infinite solutions, when you have the same line, it's dependent. Okay. And then both of these are said to be consistent. They have an answer is how I think about it. It's consistent, so it has an answer. If it's parallel, no solution, it's said to be inconsistent. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So just to go over again, because I know there's a lot of information on this little slide. One solution has different slope, different y-intercepts. It's also going to be consistent, independent. Infinitely many has the same slope and same y-intercept. It's said to be consistent and dependent. And then if the lines are parallel with no solution, you have the same slope, different y-intercepts, and it's said to be inconsistent. So it's neither independent or dependent. It's just inconsistent if the lines are parallel. So I'll give you a sec to write that down. It's a bunch of stuff. You got to know this. It happens all the way through Algebra 2 and pre-calculus. So all the way through senior year, you'll have to know and kind of remember this stuff. And as you think about all this stuff, you guys, realize, I know I bring it up all the time, but when you take SAT, they expect you to remember Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2. So you have to remember the three years of math. So if you're in the habit of doing your homework and you're making flashcards and you're trying to memorize all this stuff, it'll stick into your long-term memory. And then when you get back to Algebra 2, you'll rem you won't remember all, it, all of it, of course, but you'll remember a bunch of stuff in Algebra 2. would be a lot easier. So I'm looking at Ari's little chat here. Saw a pile of bones. Ha! Two bulls vibing. I like it. That's a disturbing scene. You never want to see that. We were on a field trip in high school to the Cleveland Metropolitan Zoo. I grew up in Cleveland. And two giraffes were doing the same thing. It was humorous. Okay. Next one. So now we're going to talk about these infinite solutions or no solution kind of problems so you can see what they look like. So you'll notice this top equation here is 2y minus x equals 2. That equation does not look like y equals mx plus b. So we have to solve this equation for y before we can graph it. This one's already in y equals mx plus b form. No big deal. This one we got to change up. So when I change this up, I cover up the variable always that I'm trying to solve for. I'm going to add x to both sides. I'm always going to write the x term first because I'm going to have to graph it. So I want it to look the same every time. It makes it easier to graph. So we have 2y equals x plus 2, like that. 
And then all I have to do is divide by two. Really, really, really important that you divide all three parts by two. So we have y equals x over two. I'm going to stick a one in front of that x because I need both the rise and the run of the slope. So I'm going to go up one, right two. Two divided by two is one. Okay, so we have this equation here and this equation here. What do you notice about these two equations? That's what I like to call a duh question. What do you notice about these two equations? It's like a metronome. They're the same. Duh, yeah, they're the same. So how many solutions? Same slope, same y-intercept. How many solutions? That was a good move, Lauren. Infinite solutions, right? Same slope, same y-intercept, infinite solutions. We're going to graph it because you have to. You only have to graph one line. That's a bonus. So we're going to start here at plus one. Up one, right one. And draw your line. There you go. Any questions on that? Good. Anyone need more time? Wave your hands frantically if you need more time. I know Lauren wants to, but she's not going to. Okay, next one. So how many solutions? You should be able to tell by looking. How many solutions? Nope. You can show me with your fingers, nope. I can't see who that is with the one finger up because you're all, there's a light behind you. Balance. I don't know where my mouse is. There it is. Boom. It is not one solution. Lauren's correct with her zero over eyeball, right? Because we have the same slope, different y-intercepts. That's how you know it's no solution, no soul. Parallel lines. So let's graph it to prove it. So we start at plus two on the y-axis, and we go up two, right one, up two, right one. Draw your lines. And then we're going to start at negative one on the y-axis, and we're going to go up one, two, right one, up one, two, right one. And you got some nice parallel lines. What is the answer? Your answer is a graph. And no soap. Okay. We good? Sweet. Look at that. We're all done. Woohoo. Okay. Your homework is right here. Page 367, 11 through 27 odd. You're writing that on top of your paper right now with your name and class period. So you may have noticed I've said that every day now for like two weeks. So starting next semester, which is starting next not this coming Tuesday, but the Tuesday after, I will start taking off one point per thing that's missing. Okay, so you need to have your name, your class period, and 
the assignment, page 367, 11 through 27 odd. If you forget to write that, those are points you cannot get back, okay, starting next semester, which is October 20th. That's when you guys will be coming back in person as well. So just get in the habit of doing it. It's annoying because I don't, like sometimes you guys will submit late work and there's, like it's a wrong assignment. I can tell it is. You didn't write the assignment and the problems. So it's just frustrating to grade. So do it. We got the assignment right here. Anybody have trouble submitting stuff to Schoology today? Okay. I've got, I'm going to pull you in a breakout room, Anna. I've got some information which will hopefully fix. Um, and then I'll pull some other people in breakout rooms. And if you have questions, do so as well. Make sure, make sure, make sure you get your missing assignments in. I want to get a ton of missing assignments by Monday. And if you're the kind of kid who turns them in all at once, don't do that. That makes me not like you. Okay. If you got 10 missings, finish one, turn it in. Do the next one, turn it in. Do the next one, turn it in. Because then I don't have to grade 7,000 assignments on next Friday. Makes it a heck of a lot easier, okay? So we're good. I'm going to get you in a breakout room in a sec. Anna, just give me a moment.